major prophets and the minor prophets. All of these prophets in the last half of the Old Testament talk about this coming Messiah. They, they predict that the Son of God, the Son of David, this King is going to come. And He's going to be a special King. And, and uh, He's going to be different from all other kings. In fact, He's going to suffer and die. This King is going to suffer and die and his, our, our sins are going to go upon Him. Yet, He's going to reign forever. So it's kind of confusing. Uh, all the prophets there in the Old Testament prophesying that this Messiah is going to come, he's going to die, yet he's going to reign as king forever. And that's how it ends in the Old Testament. So you've got the, the fall of man, the call of Abraham, God's going to create, uh, bless the whole world through Abraham, uh, the rise of Abraham's children, the nation of Israel, the promise of is to, to Israel's great king David that there's going to be this uh, Messiah through his line, and then all the prophecies from, from the prophets of the Old Testament, that this Messiah will come. The New Testament is simply the fulfillment of that. The New Testament from, from Matthew through Revelation is all about the life of Jesus and how he fulfilled everything that happened in the Old Testament. So I want to go back to the call of Abraham because that was a pivotal moment in Scripture. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you, and I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And those who bless you, I will bless, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples, all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And so Abraham and Sarah had this call from God. They had a long journey to make. They had, they had to travel away from their family to this promised land. And God said that through your offspring we're going to create this nation. But the problem was Abraham and Sarah were older. And they still hadn't had that child yet. And so it was a long journey of faith. They were trust, trusting in God to bring this child into their lives. And it was a difficult journey. They had to trust that God was going to do that. And I could relate to Abraham and, and, and to Sarah because most of us, our journeys of faith are long. And we don't, we don't discover everything all at once. Sometimes a, a person has like a 180 degree turnaround journey of faith. Uh, the Apostle Paul, for example, he, he was traveling to Damascus because he, he wanted to persecute Christians. He wanted to end his Christian movement. He wanted to destroy his, the Christian church. On the road to Damascus, he had a vision of Jesus. He was blinded by this light. He had a 180 degree turnaround. The next day, the very next day, he had turned completely around. Instead of going to Damascus to destroy the church, he wanted to go and build the church. Instead of arresting Christians, he wanted to build up and strengthen Christians. So he had a 180 degree turnaround. Most of us, it's not like that. Most of us, man, we read a few pages, we learn a little bit, things become foggy. We understand a, a little bit about the Lord and we go on our journey like Abraham and Sarah, this long journey of faith. We discover a little bit more here and a little bit more there. And as we discover more, it seems like our minds and our hearts become more and more open and, and the path becomes more clear. And so we, we turn a few more pages, we learn a little bit more, and suddenly we begin to realize, you know what? I feel like God is calling me. God wants to do something with my life. I want to learn more. I want to grow more. And, and gradually, our hearts and our minds and our spiritual eyes are opened up. And we get to that point where we want to become more serious about our faith in the Lord and about our lives making a, a positive difference in this world for the Lord. That's, that's what happens with most of us. Now, some of you might be different. You might have had a degree turnaround like the Apostle Paul. If you did, praise God. But the, for most of us, it's a, it's a longer journey of faith. That's how it was for Nicodemus in the Old Testament. Listen again. When Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. Now, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. The Pharisees were enemies of Jesus. So that's probably why he came by night. And, and he wanted to question Jesus. This is what happened. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He 
came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can perform the signs that you perform if God were not with him. Nicodemus knew there was something special about this man, Jesus. He heard him teach. He heard the words that he said. He, he saw him with the people and helping and healing and encouraging the people. He, he saw the signs. He knew there was something going on with Jesus. And, and so he came to him by night because he wanted to find out more. He wanted to learn more. This is what Jesus uh, said to him uh, immediately after he said this. John 3, 3. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now this completely threw Nicodemus off. He had no understanding of what, what the world Jesus was talking about. Born again? What are you talking about? Now how can you be born again? That's impossible. Jesus went on to explain there's a big difference between being born of the flesh and being born of the spirit. Being born of the flesh, of course, is when your mother and father conceives you and your mother gives birth to you, you are born of the flesh, you are a human being. Jesus said being born of the Spirit is different. Being born of the Spirit happens when by faith, by faith, God plants a seed within you and you receive that seed, and within you is conceived the very Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. That is being born from above. It happens by faith. You, you open your heart and you say, Lord, I, I, believe, I believe that you can put yourself inside of me, your spirit within me. And by faith, God conceives that spirit. What happens once, once the spirit is conceived within you, you begin to change. God begins to alter who you are. You become more like the Son, the example that Jesus said. You become kinder, more compassionate, more caring, more loving. You love your family. You love, you have, you love your neighbors. So what happens, uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus, is you become born from above. And transform on the inside. Now, <clears throat> Nicodemus left that meeting not understanding. I mean, it was kind of foggy to him. He had a hard time perceiving and conceiving that. But he kept turning the pages. He kept turning the pages. He kept learning. He kept understanding. We discover that in, I believe, it's John chapter 7. Nicodemus stood up in front of the Pharisees and defended Jesus. That was a dangerous thing to do. The, the Pharisees were Jesus' enemies. He stood up and defended them. We find out in John chapter 19, Nicodemus went with Joseph of Arimathea to help prepare Jesus for burial. So things began to change in his life. He turned the page. He began to understand more. He began to grow spiritually. And eventually he came to that place where the seed of the Lord was planted within him and the Spirit of God was conceived within him and he was born from above. See, God wants to open our hearts and our minds to what God's kingdom is all about. So let's keep learning. Let's keep growing. Let's keep becoming the people God wants us to be and like Abraham and Sarah and Nicodemus. Let's keep turning the pages. Amen. Let's turn to our final hymn. That hymn will be 183.